President Roosevelt once said, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. The phrase well fits the situation about fallout, the reason home shelters are needed. You don't have to be an expert to understand radioactivity. Our whole world is radioactive. The air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, all contain small quantities of radioactivity. You probably have been exposed to radiation from X-ray machines. You may have a watch or a clock with a luminous dial. It, too, is radioactive. Fallout from man-made methods is comparatively new. It dates from 1945, when the first atomic bomb was exploded. Because modern weapons have grown vastly in size, fallout is a serious problem. It may be with us forever. So long as the threat of war or nuclear accidents exist, this problem is important to you. Fallout consists of bits of radioactive dust, debris, or solid matter which settle or fall out from the mushroom cloud formed when a nuclear weapon is exploded. These radioactive particles act like miniature X-ray machines. They send out rays in many directions. This radiation is extremely dangerous. Over a period of time, sufficient quantities of radiation can lead to illness or death. But it's possible to protect yourself from it by taking the simple but important step of providing shelter against it. Let's assume that you've built a shelter, or at least family, in an area protected. You may not have much time to get into that shelter, so it's wise to furnish it now. Most of the equipment can stay there indefinitely. Food, however, should be replaced regularly. You'll need cooking and serving equipment, a canned heat cooking unit with extra cans of fuel, a frying pan, cups, and napkins a double boiler, such things as bottle and can of eating utensils, measuring cup, matches, and a pocket knife. You'll need clothing and bedding, blankets and sheets or sleeping bags, spare clothing. You'll need a battery-powered radio with aerial and extra batteries. You'll need sanitation supplies, deodorizer, soap, toilet tissue, paper towels, sanitary napkins, disinfectant, garbage can, human waste can, emergency toilet, newspapers, paper bags. If you have a baby, you'll need dehydrated milk, bottles and nipples, disposable diapers, and extra water. You'll need recreational and spiritual supplies, a Bible, books, cards or games, and if there are any children, toys. You'll need light, a flashlight with extra batteries, candles, a calendar, a clock, and hand tools probably will not be amiss if you have sufficient room. And in your car, against the day maybe two weeks later when you can evacuate, you should keep a ground cover, a tent, and extra gasoline. Most important to you and your well-being is a proper supply of food. Actually, a human being can live well beyond two weeks without food if he has water, but it can be a nervous strain, and there's no reason to impose this upon your family. Just keep this in mind. A balanced ration is important. The smart housewife will select foods that require little space for storage that keep for months without refrigeration, and that require little or no cooking. If it's required by the presence within the shelter of toddlers or invalids or diabetics or old folk, provide special milk or strained, chopped, or other special foods. Small cans and jars sufficient only for a single meal are best for foods which spoil rapidly. Remember, you'll have no refrigeration. Institute has prepared survival plans for its own employees, providing a list of foods 
which it finds sufficient to provide an adult with 2,000 calories per day for two weeks. Multiply the amount in the list by the number of people in your family, and you'll know how much to stock in your basement. After you've heard the following list, you may want to play it again while you copy down the food you'll need. The first item is milk, dry, non-fat, 20 ounces, evaporated, 14 ounces. Then juice, tomato, grape, apple. Get it in bottles with crown caps only. Juices will spoil if left too long in metal cans. Fruits, applesauce, pears, peaches. Make sure that they're in glass jars with glass lids. You'll need 112 ounces per person. Vegetables, corn, peas, beans, spinach. 112 ounces. Soups, canned or if dehydrated, in canned. Avoid tomato soup. You'll need 112 ounces again. Available such as chicken and rice or noodles, pork and beans, baked con carne, and beef stew. When you get pork and beans, buy the brands without tomato sauce. You'll need 208 ounces of these foods. Jelly or marmalade, in glass jars again, 14 ounces. Crackers, in cans or glass if you can, or store them in glass jars. You'll need 56 ounces per. Four ounces of instant coffee or tea or instant cocoa will see an adult or a child through a two-week period. And four ounces each of sugar and salt. Hard candies are almost a must for quick energy. Would be right for 14 days. Lastly, water. Drinking water and water for cleaning. You should have seven gallons of water per person for drinking. It should be stored in glass containers with tight-fitting lids in a dark place. And the containers should be rinsed and refilled every three months to keep the water fresh. It's quite possible that during your stay in the shelter, you'll be told that the radiation level has fallen sufficiently for you to go outside safely for a short length of time. During this period, you should bury your garbage and human waste at least two feet deep in the earth. Also at this time, get an additional supply of water if it's not been contaminated by fallout. Keep this separate from your drinking water until you can purify it, either by boiling, by chlorination, or by iodization. The halozone tablets your husband or your father used during the war to purify water are good. These may be hard to find, but try a drugstore or a sporting goods store. Open bones, halt bleeding, or handle burns. You'll not be able to telephone for an ambulance or call the doctor. You'll be on your own. This brings us to the first aid kit. It need not be elaborate. A small bottle of antiseptic solution, four triangular bandages for slings, a two-ounce bottle of aromatic spirits of ammonia to treat faintness. Packaged, folded, sterile dressings to cover open wounds or burns. For bandages, improvise. Use bath or hand towels or bed sheets. The older and softer, the better. Be sure you have safety pins and something sharp to cut bandages. And that you have plenty of mild soap for cleanliness. By all means, provide some tranquilizers to ease the strain and monotony of life in a shelter. A bottle of 100 should be adequate for a family of four. Tranquilizers are not a narcotic and are not habit-forming. Ask your doctor for his recommendation. No one knows if you'll ever need a shelter. But in this atomic age, it's well prepared. The best advice your government can give you is alert today, alive tomorrow.